Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome to another edition of the Sports Shop 27. I'm your host, Jermaine Cota. To my far right, we got my co-host, KJ, Kevin Johnson. And in the middle, today's special guest, man. Come on, man. Come on with it. This guy right here was a leading rusher in the Big Ten in the, in the late 90s. He played at Michigan State from 96 to 98. Also played with the Detroit Lions. Um, he's a bit, one of the bruising running backs in the Big Ten in the 90s. Had a lot of rushing yards. you will hit the R2 button on you, too. Hit the juke on you. And he has a son that's a phenomenon, too. We'll talk about that later. But right now, we're going to introduce today's guest, Cedric. All the way hey. down, in Miami. What's going on, Cedric? Hey, Jared, what's up? <laughs> okay, Jay. Thank you guys for having me on the show, man. Oh, yeah, man. No problem. For real. No problem. Yeah, so but glad to have you. don't know you, Cedric, um, let them know where you from and a little bit about your ground. I'm from Miami, Florida. You know, born and raised. Wow. Played through football here. Uh, had numerous of scholarships. Chose uh, Michigan State. Played there for Nick Saban for three years. Was drafted by the Detroit Lions. Played oh. in the NFL for four years. And, uh, you know, after, after college, uh, I mean, after my time in the pros, I uh, had a couple of knee surgeries. So I decided to retire after my third knee surgery. And uh, ever since then, man, I've been coaching football. You know, I feel like I've been blessed in that area yeah, and, back. Able to, and able to give back in that area. And, and, and that's my purpose, you know, to give back through the game of football. That's right. Hey, so uh, so so what age you start playing football and what and what sport was your first love? You know, growing up in the project, man, we played we played football all the time. You know, it was nothing for. A, a group of guys to get together. We we made a football out of anything, a sock, a tennis ball, uh, and, and we yeah. played football all the time, man. But I played all sports, even up through high school. I played four sports. And uh, even my senior year, I was athlete of the year down here in Dade County because I played uh, basketball, football, and also ran track. All right, cool, cool, cool. So growing up, who was that guy that you looked up to? Uh, was it someone in your family? Was it a, a former athlete in the NFL, college athlete? Who was that guy that you modeled your game after? Well, I wear 33 because of Tony Dorsett. You know, also Eric Red when he wore that uh, at, yep. at Florida. So all throughout my life, I either had three or 33 or one. So when I did the math, I said, you know what? I'm going to keep 33. And I had it since high school, college, and I also had it in the pros. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so once you hit the high school level, uh, did you play running back right away? No. You know, matter of fact, I had my first three years. I blocked for one of the best running backs ever to play down here in the state of Florida, with Troy Davis, who also played at Iowa State, rushed for two thousand yards back to back, was up for the Heisman, and also was drafted by the uh, New Orleans Saints in the third round. And he's one of the best running backs I've seen. So I blocked for him for two years, then blocked for his, his younger brother. And after that, my senior year, I said, you know what, I want to run the ball. So I ended up transferring to uh, Miami High, which we're known for the, uh, the Udonis Haslam of the world, the um, <laughs> Ray Johnson. Those guys attended that school, and and I, I just ran wild. You know, I ended up being first team um, all USA Today in my first year playing um, nice. uh, Nice. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, so well, talk about the um, level of competition that you were surrounded by and uh, how, you know, iron sharpens iron with all the speed that was coming from Florida in the 90s. Well, you know, we, you know, everybody always argue about who got the best football. Is it Florida? Is it Texas? Is it, you know, is it, is it California? So I, 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 I go to my grade saying it's Florida. I wouldn't even say Florida. I say Dade County. You know, uh, to come out of this county, you know, but, <laughs> You'll make a name for yourself because it's competition week in and week out. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Hey, so you, you played with Vic Penn in high school, right? Right. Vic Penn was my quarterback my senior year. Cool. I think KJ's camera froze on outside for a second. But um, yeah, you played with Vic Penn in high school. 
Uh, we're going to go back a little bit, and I'm going to ask you um, about your development stages a little bit from middle school before you got to high school. So when you played football in middle school, did you always play running back or you just a fullback or were you at a position? Well, we didn't have we don't have middle school football in the public schools down here, so it was basically on the park. So I played oh. at Pop, you know, I played Pop One until, you know, we we go by pounds. So it's seventy five all the okay. way to one. Yeah, by weight, five. weight, right? Yeah, yeah. weight class. In my, in my time, it was the seventy five all the way to one thirty five, and I made it up to one fifteen. After that, I think the next summer, after my last year playing one fifteen, I had the game about. 40 some pounds in a year and I wasn't able to even play 135. I had to sit out a year and a half. Okay, cool. So uh during that sit out, did you participate in any other sports like baseball, track, or basketball? Like I said, but growing up in the projects, man, it it kept it kept us active. You know, after you finished bat football, you went to basketball. Once you finished basketball, you went to baseball. Once you finished baseball, you ran track. And that was something I can look back at. I did from the age of five all the way till I got to high school. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, go ahead, KJ. Uh, well, we're back to high school, man. Talk about some of the rival gangs in the area, man. I mean, I don't know in how much school. time I got, but, man, I played against guys like Nate Webster, who went to Northwestern High School, who, who ended up playing in the NFL, played at the University of Miami. Um, played against a guy at Palmetto by the name of Marquis Cooper, one of my good friends, played at the University of Auburn. Um, Derrick Gibson, who was a first-round draft pick, played at FSU, played with the Raiders. Um, so, I, I mean, the list, Marvin Menace, Snoop Menace. So, I Marvin mean, Menace. I could be here all day once I recollect and <laughs> think of all those guys. Yeah, okay, hey, cool. cool. Uh, so, so uh, you guys won uh, a lot of the state championships uh, in that, in that uh, high school uh, league, correct? Right. My school at South Ridge, we were the first team. We went two years in a row. We didn't lose a game. We went 29-0. and 0. Uh, We went to state back-to-back. Mm -hmm. -back. We won one. Uh, matter of fact, we beat uh, Willie Taggart team 69-36 uh, in the state championship. And then the next year, we ended up losing to, uh, I think it was Emmett, Emmett Smith School. Uh, I mean, of course, Emmett wasn't playing then, but uh, – we lost back, <laughs> back yeah, but we was the first team to go twenty nine and zero. And matter of fact, we was ranked number one in the nation. Wow! Oh, that's that's big. That's big, Cedric. So you you guys win the state championship, and you guys head on, you know, to I guess the All American Games. Uh, I'll talk about that experience. I know you played probably, uh, you know, in the Georgia or I mean, the Florida California All Star Game or something like that. Back then, my time it was the Florida versus Georgia game. And like okay, I said, okay. I, made the, I made the first team USA Today All American team, which that's the highest team you can make back then. Um, but I wasn't able; I was elected to play, selected to play in the uh, Florida Georgia game. But once I signed to go to Michigan State, Nick Saban had me on campus two days after graduation, and that game was played uh, two weeks after graduation. So I wasn't able to play in that game. Okay, cool. And that game there is featured. Um, Darren Davis, Nate Webster, uh, Andrew James, uh, and the list goes on. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Hall of Famers. So um, talk about your recruitment process. Um, you know, you win the state championship, played in the all-star game. You got every school in America looking for Cedric Irvin, you know. Oh, yeah. You're from yeah. Florida, Day County, yeah. best high school in the nation. Talk about, you know, the recruitment and the coaches coming to your house. <laughs> Oh, man, as I look back at it, I mean, you, you, I was able to play with a guy named Lamont Green at the time. He was the number one linebacker in the country. And I was a, a sophomore. He was a senior. And to see him go through the process and have all those coaches come through the school and, and at the practice at the practice field, uh, and I was like, you know what, that's something I want to be a part of. And yeah. I was able to do that with the hard work and the playmaking skills that I had that I was one of the top recruits in the country when, I, when my time came as well. Um, I had over 40 offers. Uh, have you ever run into Tom Lennon? He's on ESPN now doing the broadcasting. I committed to six schools. You know, he always tell that story that that's, he, that's the only time he ever seen a guy commit to six schools. Schools. <laughs> hey, 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 what visits did you take? You take any other visits? I went to Florida State, Tennessee, 
uh, Auburn, um, Ohio State, and uh, Michigan State. Oh, okay. So out of all those schools, why you chose uh, Michigan State? Was it the coaches or was it the campus? Was it the uh, the, the, the program? You know, it was all of the above. But they had a situation where, you know, at the time of, of, of recruiting, they had a, a, a guy that was petitioned for a six-year. His backup was academic ineligible. So if they would have played football in February during the time of, of, of recruiting and signing day, they would have played with a walk-on. So I figured, you know what, I, I was ready to play the next level, and that was just gave me an opportunity to play early. So I selected Michigan State, and my first game on national TV, I ended up scoring four touchdowns. So to me, wow. it, was a, it was a great choice. That's what's up, man. So uh, you get to Michigan State. Uh, who's the guy that takes you under their wing, uh, uh, the, the upperclassmen? Well, when I got there, it was Derek Mason. Um, uh, we also had a guy, uh, we had Flozier Adams, you know, who was a big-time tackle, played 14 years in the NFL with uh, the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, so those guys, and I uh, also had Reese, who was a linebacker. Now he do broadcasting with the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, he, 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 was a, he was a dog, man, and – those guys were the leaders at the time, and before I took over my sophomore year, so I would give I would give those credit to those 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 couple of guys. Yeah. Hey. hey so, how was it playing for Nick Saban? I know he's at Alabama now. How was it playing with a you know a, a good coach like him? Well, with Nick Saban, intensity. That's what we grew up with down here playing in Pop One of football. Coaches, coaches was your dad. I mean, these coaches down here will yell at you. They will slap you across your head. Yeah. You. <laughs> And they, they, they was all about structure and discipline. So when yeah. you get, I got with a guy with Nick Saban, you know, his yelling and, and all his focus and all the things he demand, it was yeah. already in me. So it, it was an easy process for me. Oh, man, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Yo. So the offense that you ran in Michigan State, you guys had a tough conference at the time. You had a powerhouse in Michigan. Uh, you had Notre Dame, um, Indiana, uh, Penn State. Talk about playing in that conference and, uh, you know, playing in cold weather, Astro turf back then. It's, you know, it was a, quite the experience. Well, I don't know if you want to call it Astro turf. I call it a rug. I mean, it was, it was terrible. <laughs> so, compared to what these, these poor guys got now, it was it was terrible turf. But, I mean, that conference, you had to play every week. You know, you're playing against the Charles Woodson of the world, man. And, uh, That's true. You know, and, and I think one year they won the national championship, and then Penn State was in the top five. And then my junior year, we 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 was ranked thirty, and Ohio State was ranked number one, and we ended up upsetting them and beating them in the big house. So back then, we you know I get I get in the argument now at the barber shop and just in the gym about the conference, and I say Big Ten was the big big time conference back when I was playing. Yes, sir. So talk. Go ahead, KJ. Yeah, I was going to ask him, man, who was the hardest defense you had to face in the conference, man? Well, I, I'm going to say everybody because everybody wanted to stop me. So I faced a seven, eight man <laughs> run every week. You know, I stayed in the cold tub, man. I took some lickings and I gave out some. But, um, <laughs> I, you know, you, you play a team with Ohio State that had out of 11 guys, you had seven or eight played in the NFL. Then you play oh, Penn State. Samaya. They have they the same thing. They have another five or six guys playing in the NFL. Then yep. you play against Michigan. You got Charles Woodson and Ooh. all those guys. So, like I said, each week you had to bring your A game. Dang, man. Yep. That's what... So, you played – it's like I said, the Big Ten was so so dynamic back then. You had um, Antoine Winfield uh, at Ohio State during that time, Al mm -hmm. Harrington uh, from Penn State, Andy Katzenmeyer at Ohio State. Talk about playing against those guys and the level they played in, in on defense in college and in the pros. I mean, those names, you just named a few. Those guys was dogs, man. Them guys was playmaker. That's why they was able to play at the highest level. But one thing I will tell you, you and KJ, to ask them about me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they, All would right. Say, they would say, you know, they, they, they couldn't sleep the night before. You know, <laughs> I was hungry. I was determined, you know, to, to give my yeah. best and, and – and I know if you was to ask them back then, you know, who was one of the toughest running backs they played against, 
they had to say old Swerve and Irving, you know? Yeah. Yes, sir. Hey, man, you had a lot of running styles, man. So wh which one you like the best, man? Running people over or, you know, juking or, you know, whatever, you know? You know, it's funny you say that. I, my son took my nickname that that I that I earned in college. And it was funny. I told him the story. I said, this the nickname that I got, it was on the news. You know, they had a poll. You know what 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 can be this guy nickname? And they had a list of five names that it came down to. And and I never forget Jack Elburn, who was the uh, sports writer. He said, you know what, let's call him Swerving Irving. And that's what <laughs> that stuck with me. I even got it tattooed on my arm. So yeah. but now he called himself Swerving Irving. I'm like, hell, you ain't even earned it like I did, but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one, man. <laughs> So yeah. out of all the games you played in college, what was your most memorable game? I mean, I got to give it to the first game because, you know, coming out of three, four months out of high school, shit, I scored four touchdowns on national TV. And then also I would say uh, beating Ohio State when they was ranked number one in the country and they had us yeah. to lose by four touchdowns. And I scored a goal-winning touchdown and the defense had a great stand at the end and, and we beat those guys. So – I mean, there's some other games where I, other games where I took a punt return back, and and I never forget at the end of the game, Coach Saban gave the game ball to me. He said, uh, "I'm gonna get this ball to one of the slowest punt returns I ever seen in my coaching career." <laughs> to Cedric Irvin, I damn that wanted to take that ball and throw it in the garbage, but uh, it, it was man. a few a few memorable games that I had. <laughs> That's what's up, man. So, so talk about the bowl games, man. I know there was some good times, man. You know, fellowshipping with the guys. You know, you know, you go on the road sometimes. You know, get, you know, it's it's just a new environment. Talk about the bowl games. You know, for us, I went to two bowl games out of three seasons because I left college early. But to to the reason why we lost the bowl game because when it was time we went to El Paso and we went to Hawaii. First of all, that was my first time going to Hawaii. I'm from project you know so now i get to go to hawaii and, and, and another thing why we lost these games because everywhere we went it was hot so at the time that we was playing and fighting and trying to get to a bowl game we was playing in 20 degree weather so yeah. we would have to get out of the state of michigan and being warm weather and we weren't really focused on only think the coaches was focused on the game at the time but uh <laughs> you know one thing we had some fun times i tell you that oh yeah Oh man, I bet y'all did, man. For real. <laughs> for the for the yeah. viewers that's watching, uh, Cedric, um, let them know the importance of following your blockers and keeping the ball tucked, you know, and switching hands when you're hitting the sidelines um, as a running back, and maintaining the ball and keeping and keeping the turnovers down. Well, I had a that's chance. Right. To, I had a chance to coach with Nick Saban in Alabama. Matter of fact, I was there for oh. the first. Uh, the first uh, national championship we won when we beat Texas out in the Rose Bowl. And I had a chance to coach Mark, <coughs> excuse me, Mark Ingram and Trent Richardson and those guys. And, and I always tell them the first, the first most important thing as running back is ball security. You know, you now, now they're doing the thing high and tight. You know, when I was playing, it was, you know, we swinging the ball all over. But, yeah. you know, our thing was when we get touched, you know, two hands on the ball. Uh, but the first thing you have to do as a running back is trust your eyes. You know, trust your eyes, you know, run behind your pads, finish your runs, and if, if you if one cut and go because that next level, everybody got speed. And right. uh, you don't have speed, but if you got hips and eyes, you can you can you can be effective. That's true. Cool. Cool. So you played in the all-star game in college, correct? No, I left early. I left as a junior. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Well, we got some highlights we want to share with the fans. Uh, for those that are watching, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook. We have um, all Big Ten running back, uh, Cedric Irvin, and former Detroit Lion. All right? Let's go ahead and get into the film real quick. And uh, here we go. Again, as Schultz hands off, and again they break the run to the Spartans as Cedric Irvin on first and ten breaks it ahead for a gain of almost 11 yards. Michigan State first down, down in distance. That's what Saban preaches. We got to make down in distance favor us as 
Cedric Irvin makes it favored, and now he takes it across midfield and down to the 47-yard line of Notre Dame. Where the last line of defense, the free safety, Deke Cooper, brought him down, but it was a 16-yard run. In the second half, only 3-0. They built their lead early. They led 17-0 early in the second quarter. Oh, it's a boxing pass. It is caught at the eight-yard line. Gary Scott goes up and comes down somehow with an option pass, a 24-yard gain. Irvin threw it. Cedric Irvin. Actually, he throws it very well. I mean, we knew he was a good running back. We knew he was a good receiver. A little high, says Gary, but I'll take it. Yeah, Lamont Bryant with pressure all over Irvin. He still makes the catch. Scott still down on the ground. That's his fifth catch of the day for 66 yards. Irvin's still in the game. They got the defensive line to move. There's a penalty flag down, and this one's going for a touchdown. Irvin scores. Travis Reese, he could slip out as a receiver. He just came into the game. Scott's wide to the right. Schultz going to throw the swing to Irvin. And there's the other college touchdown. Wouldn't be denied. Cedric Irvin appeared to be stopped at the two, but wouldn't quit. Two scores, 13-30 to go. Trying to put the Nittany Lions away. Irvin for the end zone, touchdown Michigan State. Chris Gardner. Pulls the extra point through. So Cedric Irvin, three touchdowns today. Two rushing, one receiving. And the Michigan State Spartans starting to pull away from the Nittany Lions. An Alliance Bowl bid at stake. Penn State in trouble now. And it's first and goal from the three. Give it to Irvin. Cedric going for the corner. And he's in there. Then Irwin, or Cedric Urban here. A little tricky, a little razzle dazzle yesterday, huh? Well, we tried a couple things. We even tried a reverse pass one time. All yesterday, but the run they had to have came up in that second half from Cedric Urban. And Nick, now we go to the fourth quarter. Same drive. You had to have a run yesterday, and this was the one by Cedric. Third and one at the three, and we were going to go for it on fourth down. Uh, and to punch it in right there. Now, I really think that Ohio State's players, their anxiety level, their fear of losing started to kick in right here, and I think it really helped us because we just played with more and more confidence. So there he goes. Cedric just does get over. It'll be Irving picking his way. Touchdown! Michigan State ties Ohio State. With 14.20 to go, the top-ranked team... Ohio State has been tied, and now, with a decent snap, Edinger can boost the Spartans into a lead, and Ohio State would trail for the first time this year in the fourth quarter.
Yes, yes sir. <laughs> yeah, some flashbacks on that one, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and you did your thing, man. For real. Yep. Man. That's how I like So talk about the atmosphere at Michigan State. You guys were winning a lot of big games during that time when you were back there, and part of the reason was because of your running style. Uh, talk about the um, our coaching staff and Nick Saban and um, their approach to uh, game day. I think with Nick Saban, his success comes with his coaching staff. You know, we had coaches on that staff that was that that made Miami feel like it was around the corner for me. You know, I was never homesick. Okay. You know, I had coaches that I can go in they, their office, close the door, and talk about anything, you know, especially outside of football. So it was times that I didn't even have to call home because – my coaches had the answers and it wasn't the head coach all the time. So that was a, that was a big thing. And, and it was just, it was just more of a family, like to, to this day, you know, I talked to my running back coach, you know, and, and there's 20 some years later, I'm still close with his, 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 his wife and his kids. And so it, it's been a beautiful thing for me. I'm one of those that got lucky. Mm. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, talk, talk about getting ready for the NFL and playing for the D- uh, Detroit Lions and playing for the Miami Dolphins. Talk about that time. Well, for me, it was a dream come true. You know, I didn't, I didn't know the business side of it. I just thought the NFL was, you know, made it go there, compete, and made the best guy play. I didn't know about because I was in it by myself. I didn't know about the, the 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 economics of it. You know, you can be better than a guy, but if he making more money than you, we gonna play the guy that made more money than you, and that's the. truth. That I fell in because when I got drafted to the Detroit Lions, um, Barry Sanders retired that year, and I felt like you know I was I could have been that guy, but I never got, had the chance to, you know, get the carries that I received in college. So you know it was a lot of plays that were left down the field that I wanted to have, but never really had the opportunity. But the chances that I did get the opportunity, I mean, one year I led the team in rushing touchdowns, became a third down back, returned punts. So, you know, I'm still grateful for that opportunity. Cool. Nice. So uh, going into uh, <clears throat> the Detroit Lions, you had, you, had, you know, future Hall of Famers like uh, Robert Porsche on your team, um, you know, Barry Sanders. Um, <laughs> I know Scott Scott Mitchell was your quarterback during that no, period. I had uh, Charlie Batch. Charlie Batch. Okay, cool. cool. I had Charlie Batch, and then one year I had Hall brought as his backup. You know, so I had some chance to, to share the locker room with a lot of great guys. All right, cool. So uh, any funny stories with any other uh, with any teammates? Got a whole lot on, but I don't think I can say I'm on this show right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I just thank God that it wasn't no social media back in those days. Tell me, okay. man. <laughs> give, give us a funny story, man. It could be college or NFL. Oh, man, let me see. Funny, 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 funny. Uh, okay, I got one with uh, Nick Saban. Uh, it was a time in the summer I wanted to go home, and he wouldn't let me go home. He was saying I waited too late to go home. I had to be back, like, the next day or or, the, or two days later. He was saying it wasn't worth it. And I told him uh, no one was on campus. I didn't have any money. And so I ordered 10 boxes of pizza to the football building, and I waited outside. And when the pizza man came, I took the, the pizza and told him that uh, Coach Saban to pay for the pizza. He got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> so what he what he say after he found out about the bill? Nothing. He was he was he, uh, I mean it was a summer, so nobody was on campus, and uh, he was just looking for me. He couldn't do nothing until Monday, and it was just nothing but a conversation. He just laughed it off. He, he couldn't it. Get it. <laughs> Cool. So uh, you, you play with the Lions, you play with the Dolphins. Uh, who are some of your uh, impactful teammates on the Dolphins team? You know, one guy I got a lot of respect for is Ricky Williams. Man, he he, he had a great work ethic. Um, he was a guy that I'm gonna say pulled me on his wing, but we sat by each other in the uh, in the film room, and you know, if, if I if I had any questions because he was there before I got there, uh, he was he was very helpful. Um, but, you know, I played with Jason Taylor, Zach Thomas, um, Orlando Gaston, all those guys that I have, I got a pretty good relationship with. Cool. 
Yeah, you guys had a good, uh, you know, secondary that year, like Patrick Sertain, Sam Madison, um, Atul Freeman, a lot of other guys out there. You know, he's from our hometown, played at our high school. Um, so talk about, you know, the difference between, um, uh, I guess you could say, the levels of college and the NFL for a running back. Because nowadays you guys may not get 20 or 30 carries like you used to in the 90s. Well, for me to be honest right now, I hate it, man. I, I I hate football now <laughs> because of that position, man. Is if you think about the eighties and the nineties, man, it was the the eye formation, you know, three three yards in a pound of dust, and you know, run hard, run the ball to set up the pass and get on the goal line, you know, goal line set. Now you go on the goal line, people going spread. I mean, <laughs> just, yeah, to man. Me, it's not fun anymore, man. But uh. You know, the difference is I always tell people football is football. You know, it just mm -hmm. every level, you know, you get guys that's bigger and faster, but it's still the same game. You just have to adjust to it and compete and have more desire and impose your will on, on other people and just make plays. Yeah. Hey, uh, talk, talk about playing for uh, Berlin uh, Thunder. Now, that, that was fun. And when I say that was fun because I had knee surgery, that was my – second knee surgery so i sat out a year and the dolphins signed me and they allocated me and sent me over to uh, berlin without my first time in germany and um and when i said it was fun because it was like a, it was like uh like playing jv for me i'm not knocking <laughs> back then but yeah that 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 uh league was guys that was trying to get into the nfl and i was blessed yeah. to be drafted so you know i kind of had a little hockey people looking up to me but um you know we had fun you know I, I ran wild you know i ran good enough where when i came back you know the dolphins wanted me and ricky to be on the field at the same time and i had a good preseason but once again i had another surgery and that was it for me i couldn't take it no more man wow man, i understand man so you leave the nfl you know you leave the Dolphins from uh, Berlin, and you uh, pick up, a, 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 I guess, a job. You started coaching, or what did you do next? Yeah, I was coaching. I've been coaching ever since, man. It's, you know, one of the things in the NFL, like they say, the NFL stands for not for long. Not and I long. think that you got you to have a plan, you know, especially if you don't make, you know, all the big bucks where you secure for life. And for me, ever since I stopped playing football, I don't feel like I work. Because every time I go to work, it's not work. You know, I feel like I got an opportunity to pour into someone, someone kid to help them to get to where they want to go. Um, so I've been doing that and, and 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 don't regret it. Okay, cool. So we got some highlights, man. You, you had an interview. Uh, I guess you're a head coach down. Are you back in Florida now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Well, what's the name of this high school that you're coaching at? Uh, right now, I'm at uh, Gull Miami Gulliver Prep. Uh, right uh -huh. now, we're a uh, five and zero. Oh, got a big game tomorrow, but you know the joy for me is having the opportunity. I've been a head coach for ten years now. I'm just a running back coach, but you know I, I have a chance to coach my son, who's the starting running back of the team. And um, so to me, man, it just all prayers been answered. You know, it was yeah. great. Time. I've been doing it for now to three three years, and and I love it. All right. Well, let's take a look at this interview. Um, I guess this is uh, um, in 2014. What school were you coaching at then? I was the head coach at Westminster Christian. Okay. Did you guys finish in the playoffs and go to state championship? We was we was 30 seconds from going to the first state championship of the school history. 30 Man. seconds? What 30 happened? Seconds. We lost that last, last touchdown. Man. Six zero, yeah. Oh man, was it, so you didn't, so the defense didn't held up on the last on the last uh, possession. Man, if you know our situation at school, I mean, we 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 did what you call Iron Man football. You know, we only had twenty six yeah. kids. Two was mm -hmm. two two was quarterbacks, and another two was kickers. So we had guys that played all three phases of the game. Never came off the field, but those guys fought, fought man, and to this day, I'm proud of them. All right. Let's take a look at this interview real quick. For everybody watching, make sure you subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Spotify, and Deezer, and also cop the merch online as well.
Thanks for I said what uh, I evaluate the win there over Cardinal Newman. It was a good win. You know, I challenged my guys on Monday to come out, to play with a lot of effort, play with a lot of toughness, and they, they came out and they did it. Your defense really dominated them, really didn't give them a chance. Well, you know, here we play Ironman football. You know, we got 23 guys, and three of those guys are kickers. And so my defense is my offense, and my offense defense is my special team. So they came out and played, uh, you know, tough man football today. James Sutton seemed to really get after and had a lot of good pressure on the quarterback. Well, I mean, James this year, you know, had at least 17, 18 sacks, probably missed another six, but today had four, and he's a guy that, you know, all year been dominating. And offensively, it seems you got a lot of production from a lot of different guys, Oliver, Gator, Cronkite, Irvin. Mm -hmm. I mean, those guys are playmakers. You know, when you talk about guys rating in the county and the state, you know, those guys got to be at the top. You know, they got good work ethic. Um, they play with a lot of effort, you know, good attitudes, and, and they're great teammates. And, you know, and, and making plays, that's what they do. You've been kind of building this thing up for a couple of years. The experience of last year helped you think for, your, for what you want to accomplish this year? Oh, yeah. I mean, anything less than going past the last year to us is a waste. And, and that's the kids' goals. So, you know, we're just going to keep pushing. You know, just a school and kids where, you know, we walk by faith and not by sight. You know, when we get off the bus, there's nothing scare you about us. You know, but these guys work hard. They sacrifice. They got good attitudes. And uh, and we're a disciplined team. And that's what gets us over the top. Uh, assuming it's American Heritage, Del Rey, I know that that's a, uh, a game significant to you guys. Well, I mean, they're the top dogs. You know, they're undefeated. They're playing good football where they're running the ball real good. So it'll be a challenge, but we got to take the challenge. You guys go right back to work tomorrow. Nine o'clock. <laughs> All right, sir. Congratulations. All right. Good interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. So now you had a great season. I saw uh, your teammates trying to get some camera time in the background back there, photo bombing you a little bit. Uh, yeah. Talk about the camaraderie that you guys. You just mentioned in the interview with that team. I mean, when you only have um, – You say they both played both sides of the ball. Right. We only have so many kids, and and, and it was a great knit, knit of kids where, you know, we did everything together, man. In the summer, we'll, we'll go to one of the kids' houses. we have a pool party. You know, I even took the kids. It was a Christian school. I even took them to my church. Um, and to have those guys go through that experience, man, some of them never been to church. Never even been to a black church, uh, but they enjoyed it and it became like a tradition thing. Uh, so, man, it was a great day. Even now, I think two years ago, we had like a, what they call a quote unquote, a reunion. You know, guys got okay. together with you, man, talked about old times. Then I find out some stories that I didn't even know that happened, that we did, some of the kids did some things. And I was like, you know, I can still punish your ass for what you did. But, uh, <laughs> it was good, man. It was all a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your advice uh, for any uh, student athlete, whether, they're, you know, middle school, high school, college? What is your uh, biggest advice for today's uh, generation? You know, I would tell them to, to set goals. And when you set goals, know that there's always a process before prize. You know, a lot of people want the success now, you know, a lot, and no one want to work for it. And then during that process, man, you're going to have to make choice and decisions. And with every choice and decision come consequence. But take the long road, you know, be patient, you know, have faith, but work your tail off for whatever you want. You know, you hear that all the time like a cliche, but it, it's the truth. But don't be denied. You know, when, th when things get tough, just keep working, per persevere. You know, and, and um, you know, look look at adversity on the face and and and, and don't 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 back down, be patient. And, and and just had a determination to be better than you was the day the, the day before. And uh, with that, I promise you, if you don't get close to your goal, you're going to get close to it where you're going to be satisfied with whatever you come out with. Oh, yeah. So so what you think about Michigan State program now? Since, you, you know. If... I'm going to go back to tell you why I, I, I dislike football now. But I like it because now we're running the ball. We got a number one running back in the country. Why? Because we're running the ball. You know, right. run the ball. if you can run the ball, you will have success. But everybody want to do more. Everybody want to make the next Tom Brady. No, let's go back <laughs> yep. make the next NFL, the next Walter Pay, the next Barry Sanders. Let's try to find those guys and, yeah. and see how fun. For, if you run the ball, 
you won't get all these touchy fouls and can't hit with your helmet and and all this other stuff that's going on now. So I don't give. I think if I didn't have kids that was playing football, I probably wouldn't even watch football now. <laughs> okay. Wow. So before we head out, who's your top five NFL players or running back? Which one? Whichever one you want to choose. Well, I, I got to pick Michael Irvin because he's a, he's my cousin. Man. He's a, he's a Hall of Famer. Okay. But, uh, and I, I love the running backs, man. I, I would say, you know, ahead of my time, it was the it was the Walter Paytons, it was the Emmy Smiths of the world, it was the Barry Sanders of the world. Um, you know, if you if you're a fan of the game, you you know, uh, Ray Lewis. Um, right. So, um, you know, I'm just naming guys at the top of my head. But if I had to just really do my homework. Um, I mean, I, I need more than five. Oh, yeah. Okay. No problem. Well, it was cool having you on the show, man. We appreciate you coming on. Thanks for giving us your time. Any oh, yeah. shout outs before we head out? Oh, man. I just want to thank Big Pen for introducing me to you guys and me having the opportunity. So, to have you. <laughs> now I feel like Penn. I accomplished something, man. I had a chance to have an interview again, so I feel good. Oh, yeah, yeah man. man. We enjoyed you, man. Yeah. Good conversation. Welcome anytime. Welcome anytime to come back and talk about another subject if you like. Okay. Yeah. My, I appreciate it. Yeah, no man. problem. No problem. You guys make sure you subscribe and watch our channel on YouTube, uh, right. Spotify, and Deezer. Also follow us on Facebook. Um, you just tune in to another edition of Sports Shop 27. I'm your host, right. Jermaine Coulter. To my far right, Kevin Johnson, KJ. And today we like to thank special guest, former. I'm going to say Hall of Fame, running back from Michigan State. You know what I mean? Because he you know, did put in that work. I watched you as a kid. Earn it. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah. Uh, go ahead. You was about to say something? Oh, you hooked yeah. your head off. <laughs> he gone. All That's right. Good, you guys man. tune in next time. We have fun. Make sure you wear your mask. And it's not how you start. It's how you finish. That's All how right? you finish, man. Stay Keep tuned. Going. Peace.